This is the recording for the lecture notes on viruses for uh, Bio 112. All right, let me put this in slideshow mode. All right. Um, all right. So viruses are, first of all, it's really important that you understand that even though viruses affect living things and they have some things in common with living things, they are not considered living things. So what they have in common with them is that they do have um, a nucleic acid, um, either DNA or RNA. And they, um, they have a, a protein caps, capsid. They're enclosed with a capsid called, you know, that's made of protein. So, but they're not cellular. And we say, we call that acellular, not cellular. Sorry. They are parasites. Um, which means that they do um, attack a host cell and they use the host cell to reproduce. So without a host cell, viruses cannot reproduce. Um, let's see, and just the last thing um, on this picture, let me see if I can. I don't think it has anything under underneath it. Okay, well, I can tell you what these are. Um, the picture on the left are um, images taken with an electron microscope um, of the uh, tobacco mosaic virus. Tobacco mosaic, sorry, tobacco mosaic virus. And um, so each one of these, the, the shape is called filamentous. Um, each one of these structures is a um, vi virion. So an individual virus particle is called a virion. And then you can see the effect that the tobacco mosaic virus has on, these are actually orchid leaves. So the tobacco mosaic virus can infect plants other than tobacco. Um, it was found first in tobacco, but it, we know it can infect tomato plants. It can infect orchids, um, many other, other plants. But these are some of the symptoms that you see here. Um, brown spots, a yellowing leaf. Um, the leaves are supposed to just be green, you know, just solid green. Um, here is one that's that's got some spots on it, even though it's still green. This one is obviously turned very dark and has just a few green spots left on it. And then this one has, um, it's basically just shriveled and uh, died, turned black and died. Um, so, are viruses alive? We already answered that. No, viruses are not alive. They're not considered living things. Um, the way your text describes it is that viruses exist in a nether world between living and non-living entities. So living things grow, metabolize, and reproduce. Viruses are dependent on their host cells to reproduce or replicate, and they do not metabolize or grow. So, for example, um, if you don't remember what metabolize means, for example, every one of the cells in our bodies, um, human beings, in uh, the trillions of cells that make up our bodies, 
all of them take in oxygen and glucose and convert that into carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. So that's um, one example of metabolism. Metabolism is just the chemical reactions that go on inside our, our individual cells, our body cells. And viruses do not do that. Um, and they don't grow. The host cell is used to assemble the virus into its mature form, and it never changes from that. All right, so discovery of viruses first. Um, remember this term, virion. So virions are single virus particles. They're very small. Um, this, for example, is right here. This is a bacterium called E. coli. <clears throat> You've probably heard of that lives inside the um, intestines of animals. And that bacterium is blown up here in the picture, in picture A. This is the outside of this bacterium. And this structure that looks like a spaceship is called a bacteriophage. That's a virus that infects bacteria. So um, that spaceship looking thing, you can, visualize, you can visualize in your mind about how small it is compared to a bacterial cell. So uh, viruses are very, very small, so they were hard to discover. They were not discovered until the 1930s, for sure, when scientists could see them under an electron microscope. Now, there are two types of electron microscopes. There's a um, transmission electron microscope and a scanning electron microscope. The, um, both of them can see viruses, um, but uh, one of them just sees the outside, and then the other can see um, structures on the inside. But um, initially, when viruses were discovered, they were grouped by shared morphology. That means if they looked alike, then they were grouped together. But later, we found out that wasn't a good way to group them. So later, they were grouped by the type of nucleic acid that they had, DNA or RNA. And whether their nucleic acid was single or double-stranded. So here we're coming to something new. We learned in Bio 111 that DNA is double-stranded and RNA is single-stranded. In viruses, you can have single-stranded DNA. A virus can contain single-stranded DNA as its um, genetic material. Double-stranded DNA, single-stranded RNA, or even double-stranded RNA. So the double-stranded RNA and the single-stranded DNA are the exceptions. These are the ones that we did not learn about in Bio 111 because viruses are the only um, particles, even though they're non-living, they're the only, um, um, I guess you say, objects, <laughs> particles that we'll be studying that, that can have single-stranded DNA and double-stranded RNA. Um, and they can then they can also have double-stranded DNA and single-stranded RNA. So each type of nucleic acid, acid can be single-stranded or double-stranded. Um, now, as far as the theories, they're not theories, they're hypotheses. The hy um, there's a difference. <laughs> the hypotheses of the origins of viruses, um, there are three. So there is the devolution combining the D, like de-evolution, devolution, or regressive hypothesis. And what that says is that viruses evolved from free living cells. That's the main thing you need to know is that viruses evolved from free living cells. So it's called de-evolution or devolution because it's like the free living cells evolved from, their, from simple uh, types of cells and a virus would be much simpler than a free-living cell, so it would be kind of evolving backwards. So viruses evolved from free-living cells. That's the devolution hypothesis. 
Then there is the escapist hypothesis, also known as the progressive. And that says that viruses originated from RNA and DNA molecules that escaped from a host cell. Um, the last hypothesis is the self-replication hypothesis. That says that um, the viruses likely evolved alongside the cells they rely on as host. Some of the plant pathogens, um, studies that, that have been done with plant pathogens like tobacco mosaic virus, um, support this hypothesis that they just, the viruses evolved along with their host. Kind of like coevolution with bees and um, with um, pollinators like bees and flowers. All right, morphology just means form or structure. So again, we've learned this word, this is the third time, so make sure you remember it. A virion has a, is an individual virus particle. It has a nucleic acid core, which can be single-stranded DNA, double-stranded DNA, single-stranded RNA, or double-stranded RNA. So we call that the core, the nucleic acid core. And then surrounding that nucleic acid core is, a, is an outer capsid made of protein. And the capsid is made of individual structures called capsomeres. And sometimes outside that capsid, there will be an envelope very similar to the phospholipid bilayers in, in um, cells, you know, so in any type of cell. So the outer envelope would be composed of phospholipids and protein, just like the phospholipid bilayer in all the other li living things that we've studied. Okay, um, viruses may also contain enzymes and other proteins. Um, for example, there are enzymes that are needed um, for processes like replication, transcription, translation. We'll talk about this in a minute, in, in a little bit more when we get to the um, Baltimore classification system. But for example, RNA polymerase is the enzyme that converts um, the DNA template to messenger RNA. We learned that in Bio 111, it was called transcription. So different enzymes uh, help carry out um, different stages of the viruses. Um, uh, we, can, we can say life cycle, I guess, but just remember that viruses really aren't living things, but different stages that happen to um, when a virus infects a host cell all the way until it reproduces, it reproduces new virions, okay? So viral genomes can contain genes for proteins that the virus cannot get from the host cell. If it can get these proteins from its host cell, then, um, sorry, I'm just checking the time. If it can get these proteins from the host cell, then it doesn't, um, doesn't need to have them. But if it needs an enzyme that the host cell does not provide, then it can, a, vi a viral genome can contain the gene for that enzyme. All right, uh, again, about the viral genomes, the genome is just the nucleic acid inside of the, um, in the core of the virus. You can have single-stranded or double-stranded DNA or RNA. So there's four basic types of genomes that you can have. Single-stranded DNA, single-stranded RNA, double-stranded DNA, double-stranded RNA. And the, um, the individual chromosomes can be linear or circular. The chromosome in a, in a bacterium is circular, for example, and the chromosomes in uh, human beings are linear. They're rod-shaped and then they combine to form um, an X shape whenever they are duplicated. 